Okay, I'm back, folks. Um, but basically, well, what? But basically, that's part one, so now we're in part two. And this will probably go to 11.14. Alright, so continuing on. And I quote, For those wondering about the summary's record of quote-unquote experience looking after young acorns, this misses, the misses isn't talking hogaculture. They were, in fact, Eliza's foster parents, rescued as an infant from a crash on Angel Island. He was first raised by the Brotherhood of Guardians before being lettered, or lettered over to the royal compound in the care of, uh, in the, care of the submarines. Ken Penders established as much in the Knuckles story arc for Venom Zone, Knuckles issues 19 to 21, which I'm pretty sure you can find in the archives now. I elaborated on the relationship between Elias and the summaries in my fan fiction, quote unquote, The Grey Letter. Despite a few details, this is another helping of the same old, same old. Ian is running out of changes to make this story arc interesting. Small wonder that the comics will slam on the brakes as far as the continuity is concerned and work in stories about the Olympics and this and quote unquote Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed. One of the most unwelding names for a video game I've ever heard. The interruption will also realign the numbering of both Sonic and Sonic Universe so that So that 250 will work, Sonic 250 will work with the numbering scheme and not against it. The story still showcases some serious weak writing. The story still showcases some seriously weak writing. Head score, head, head portion of the main story of 239, head score, 5. So he gave it a 5. Well, let's see what that adds up to. I score. In other words, the I category is artistic, how the art comes off. The I score. Jamal Pepper's artwork is excellent, though the colonel is unbelievably buff for someone who's supposed to be retired from active service. I score, artistic score, 10. So you got 15 so far. Alright. Heart score. I keep coming back to the fact that Eliza's never looked out the window at South. Had he done so, it would have given the story a reason to slow to a crawl as Eliza wrestles with himself, well, trying to recon reconcile his earlier macho posing with whatever feelings he should have been allowed to have towards his kid's sister. The, de the, the deathering and arguing that ended up slowing his escape made a poor substitute. Made a poor substitution. Once again, Archie wimps out on the possibility of a heart moment, especially when family is involved. Elisa can't even do the math himself. We get Amy Rose crunching the relationship numbers. As for Mecca Sally, if she's still herself in a metallic body, she's not letting on. Her observation, quote unquote, target lost, betrays no emotions at having failed to reunite with her brother, even with hostile intent. I don't know why Archie, which is the only constant in the comic's two-decade run, seems to think that a display of emotion is a liability. It's been my experience that while action makes a story interesting, heart makes it memorable. There certainly isn't very much memorable about this installment, considering it's been done and redone. Heart score five. I mean, heart score four. Heart score four. So together, he's got a 19 out of 30 for issue 239. There is no backup story. I'm sorry to say, there's no backup story. So 19 out of 30. Well, as I said, 30 out of 30 is like perfect. 30 out of 30 is like an A+. Plus. Okay? A 25 out of 30 is like... A B plus. A 20 out of 30 is like a C plus. So on average, he's got, he gave it 
grade-wise, on average, a C. Basically, it's a C graded, C rating. Basically, it's given a grade of a C. So, basically, is he basically a, a 19 out of 30 issue? Basically, grading of a C. Now, what about the second part? Well, this is only three pages, so it shouldn't take too long. In fact, everything's on the first page for as far as spoilers go. I mean, as far as the review goes. But this is what he says about Part Two. Who, Science Hr 240, it released in October of last year. He says, Greg Horn cover. Amy's representing Yo. Hey, Amy. The '80s called. They want the background back. <laughs> okay. And this is what he says, everybody's basically the same as last time. The one thing is he says is choreographer Mike Rithra. That's it. But this is his review of Sonic the Hedgehog 240, released in October, titled Heroes Part 2 for the People. In the midst of the fight in the feral forest, Amy Rose discovers that her internet connection is down. Tails then reconfigures T-Pup to act as a router. Back on the Death Egg, Eggman is thinking that this should be a simple invasion, but that's before the Death Egg bumps up against the force field. That doesn't last long as the Tails doll as the tail that doesn't last long as the Tails doll shuts down the electric generator. No sooner does Eggman deploy a landing party than Rhoda and the so-called Team Freedom go into action. We miss the action in favor of watching Elijah and the Wolf Twins escort Elijah into Hardy Who's presence. Which means exposition in T's three page introductions of the rest of the team members. We also get the spectacle of Harvey more or less shaming Elijah into joining in for the fun in games. Back in town, Rhoda discovers the limitations of sending a girl to do a big boy's job and reassigns Cream to directing traffic. Rhoda has a bigger problem to worry about when Naga shows up to blow back the invading robots with his magic. But he succeeds in awakening the voices in his head, who then inform him that his shell is starting to mutate. So we finally get an explanation as to where Naga's case of Bud Ugly is coming from. Rhoda recognizes that Naga is in no shape to help, so he has Big evacuate him to the rear well, he and Heavy keep up the resistance. Back on the Death Egg, Eggman realizes that, this, that desperate times call for ridiculous measures. And so he launches Team Metal, consisting of Metal Sonic, Metal Tails, and Metal Amy Rhodes. Why not? Sure. But as Rhoda and his team manage, but as Rhoda and his team engage Team Metal, Team Elizus, or whatever they called, or whatever they're called, get some licks in themselves. In Larry's case, he wanders around spreading, spreading bad karma while Shard, Silver, and Elizus do the heavy lifting. In this issue, Mecha Sally literally phones it in, saying that the invasion is a failure, prompting Edmund to drop a hint or two about upcoming developments. Elizus apologizes for opposing the idea of the teams, and Nagus comes up with the decision to hex the council. Only we don't know that yet because this is a setup for the Unsung Heroes arc currently running in Sonic Universe. Got it? Okay. That was just basically the first page right there. So what's he give the head score for part two heroes um, for Sonic 240 heroes part two for the people? What does he give them? What's he give the score? Well, let's take a look. The head score. This is, a, this is the story Ian Flynn would do well to include on his resume as an example of action and more action. There's running and flying, shooting and punching, and I know that for a lot of fans this is good enough. This is what they expect from a comic book. It feels as if Ian is throwing everything onto the page, expecting it to keep the juice flowing. I reached this conclusion when the Tails doll appeared, messed with the power, and disappeared. 
It served no other purpose. I wanted to address this story in detail, but it is so mechanically, but it's so mechanical and brain dead that it really doesn't invite analysis. We read the story, and it's like watching a Michael Bay movie. You sit back and let it happen to you. There's really no point in taking it apart and analyzing it. It does what it's supposed to do, accompanied by crongs and bracks and picos and punches with no sound effects and, and bits of physical business that become more improbable with every turn of the page. The fact that Mecca Sally can't even be bothered to show herself except in a flashback says it all. This story, in every sense, a no-brainer. And who needs brains when you have action and more action? Head score, three. All right. The I score. Stephen Butler, the I score, the artistic score. Stephen Butler is in the swing of things here and keeps the pace up. Even in the three-page boring part where we introduce, where we're introduced to Eliza's team, I score eight. Heart score not available. So basically, for two forty, he gives it a score of eleven. Yeah, eleven out of thirty. Uh huh. So if you think a twenty is like a C plus and fifteen is like a D plus. What the heck do you think 11 to close to 10 is? It's a failure. Yeah, it's a D minus, very low D minus grading, near an F, which basically says failure. So basically when you combine both scores of both issues, 19 out of 30 on 39, 239, and 11 out of 30 on there, when you combine both stories of both issues, you essentially get um, 30 out of 60. That's what you get. Essentially, that's what you get. You get a 30 out of 60. And if 60 and 60, like 30 and 30, is good, 50 out of 60 is a B, 40 out of 60 is a C, okay, then you're looking at a D, basically the whole hero's subplot of this massive story arc has been going on since October of 2009. If this two, these two issues together, this two-part subplot, a sub-arc, basically gets a 30 out of 60, then overall, the story is a D, grade-wise. It's a D plus at most. But individually, 239 is better than 240. Go figure. But then again, when I look at this, and heck, I, I have the issues, I just haven't read them yet, but just by looking at this and reading these reviews, it tells me you could have easily crammed both those stories into one issue. You could have used 240 as a part to continue and help the story arc out otherwise. That's the way I look at it. And I know a lot of other people look at it that same way too. And it's the truth. You could have used 240 for other things. But that's all I'm going to say on his review of 239 and 240. Let me know what you guys think down below. These will be in a playlist along with the links as well as in the description box. Let me know what you guys think. I'll be back later to review the Sonic Universe issues. Or read his reviews on Sonic Universe.